Jesus at the center of it all. Oh, Jesus at the center of it all. Hey guys, what's up? It's Marte. Today we are talking about how to keep Jesus as your Lord and Savior the center of your life. And why are we talking about this? One of you sent me a DM. I feel like it was almost a year ago, so I apologize. But you sent me a DM asking about how I do that. And I was like, that is a fair question that I've never really thought about, like in terms of asking someone, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just different. So I wanted to come through because we did a vote like, I don't know, like a couple months ago on my YouTube community tab. And I asked you guys, like, I think it was like five or six different subjects for this come away series that I'm doing. And if you're new here, welcome, make sure you subscribe. This come away series that I'm doing is all about how to grow in intimacy with Jesus. And I'm not coming at you from a teacher perspective, even though your girl loves to teach, I'm coming at you from a home girl sister perspective of like, this is what I've done in my life and this is what I've been taught. I hope it blesses you kind of perspective, you know what I mean? So I'm not the end all be all with all of these videos and subjects, but we've talked a lot about getting to know Jesus, like how to seek the Lord with all your heart, how to fast, how to read the word, all of these different subjects, how to hear the voice of the Lord. It has been so cool and I don't know where I'd be if I wasn't taught by someone or I didn't ask someone for guidance in those areas. So I'm so glad that you guys are taking to these videos. But today we're talking about Jesus at the center of it all. How do you do that? And I'm excited. Like I said, in the community tab on my YouTube page, you guys voted this one pretty high. And I think the, the least one that you want to know about was how to pray. So I think this is gonna be our last come away series video, unless the Lord really shakes me up and says no. But I really feel peace to end it right here. I know sad <laughs> but we've had an amazing time and i'm just excited so i'm gonna jump in i'm gonna give you guys three ways to keep jesus at the center of your life and these are three ways that i do it now do i think that these three ways are the only three ways or necessarily the best three ways no but they have really impacted my life so i'm just gonna jump on in here the first way that you can keep jesus at the center of your life is let me be completely honest and some of you might not like it is praying that simple prayer. Hey Jesus, help me to keep you the center of my life. God, be the center of every area and facet of my life. Be everything to me. Tear down my idols. Praying that, even if you pray it once, I pray it all the time, praying that prayer, even though it feels super weak, the Lord honors it and he comes to fulfill that prayer. His will is that you would be an in love, abandoned bride to him, the bridegroom. So when you pray that prayer, even though it might feel so dumb or you might feel inadequate or might feel small, it is absolutely honored by the Lord. Now here's the thing you need to know though, when you pray that prayer, it might not be honored the way you want it to be honored. So I look back and the Holy Spirit has actually helped me do this. I remember when I was in youth group when I first jumped into the faith, I prayed to the Lord something to the effect of, may I always be hungry for you. It seemed really great. I'm like, the Lord's gonna give me hunger. That's gonna be amazing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is gonna be great. I'm always gonna be in love with Jesus, you know? And that was really my prayer. I meant it. I was young, I was like 15, and I did not understand the consequences and the things that would happen as an answer to that prayer. And now that I'm like twice as old, I have seen the Lord and he has shown me Holy Spirit has been faithful to be like, hey, remember that prayer you prayed? This is why this is happening in your life. And so, you know, I've lost friends and I have not gotten certain opportunities that I really, really wanted and thought I should be able to operate in. And the Lord took me back in those moments that were heartbreaking and said, hey, remember that prayer you prayed? Hey God, I wanna always hunger and thirst for you. Hey God, I always wanna be in love with you. This is why I didn't give you this opportunity. This is why I shut this door with this guy that you were dating. This is why so-and-so ghosted you. This is why so-and-so blah, 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 or this happened, that happened. So, you know, I don't think you need to be scared of that prayer because God is so great at leading. He is a perfect leader, but I just wanna be honest. It might not be answered the way you think it will be. The second thing to help you keep Jesus at the center of your life and all you do and everything that you are is time. The Bible does say, and this is my paraphrase, but it does say where your treasure is, your heart is also. Many of us, our biggest treasure is our time. So if you can give your biggest treasure to the Lord, just 
you know, even if it's the first moment of your day or the last moment of your day, if you can give some time to him and pray and renew your mind, I think you will be a-okay when it comes to keeping Jesus at the center. There's something about praying and renewing your mind that keeps you focused on what's important in life and keeps you in agreement with what God has for you. You know, the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So if you're praying and reading your word, you are going to be a-okay. Now the next thing I want to give you, my third point on how to keep Jesus at the center is godly community. I actually did a video on how to find godly community right here. But the reality, you guys, is that godly community, when we get off track, like Paul says in Hebrews, he says, do not forsake the fellowship of the saints. And he was not just like giving a light suggestion. He was like, there's severity to forsaking community that is after the same goal of keeping Jesus at the center. It's just a staple principle of life. And when I say this, I mean this with all humility and love. If you want to be a great runner, you probably shouldn't be running with people that just started running. It's not that they can't become great runners. The best runners run with each other. So if you want to be a great runner and you kind of get started, go run with someone who is better than you. If you want to be a great cook, right? You don't go ask your friend that's never cooked a dish in five years or that hasn't cooked a dish in five years. You go to a great chef who might be able to give you some instruction. You YouTube a great chef and you follow their instructions, you know? So if you want to be steadfast in seeking the Lord and keeping him at the center, you need to be around people who are also doing the same. It is not easy, let me tell you, because when you get off track a little bit, they keep you accountable and that conviction hits your heart and it doesn't always make your flesh happy. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just being honest. <laughs> But it is so crucial and it will change your life. You guys, I think it's really that simple for me. In the comments below, tell me what keeps Jesus at the center of your life and let me know. For me, it's those three things. And one last thing I wanna just leave you with is, remember, once you pray that prayer, like I gave you in tip number one, hey God, please be the center of my life. Do whatever it takes, you know? Whatever it sounds like for you, you don't have to pray it the Marte way. Pray it your way. I wanna remind you that Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God, are fully alive. The Father is alive. Jesus is alive. He is sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding for you day after day, second after second. The Holy Spirit is with you if you are a believer. He is going to be faithful to bring it to pass. He's alive. He's not dead. So it doesn't have to be all of your own striving. You can lean on God and know that your refinement and perfection and your completeness and you keeping Jesus at the center is going to be their main agenda. All you have to do is say yes to them and the Holy Spirit will bring it to be in your life. All right, you guys, I love you so much. Make sure you subscribe. This is the end. Come Away series completed. This has been so much fun. If you are new here, please look in the description of this video. I'm going to put a playlist of all the videos. There's a music video to go with it too of a song that I came out with called Come Away. I'm so excited, you guys. This has been such a blessing. I have dove deeply with you guys into this and I wouldn't change it for the world. So I love you guys. Leave me another comment in the comment section below about what kind of series would you like next? I'm thinking because it's always on my heart lately, mostly because I have so many single friends and they don't want to talk about it. So I always bring it up. Dating, I'd love to talk about dating and get some people who are married and single and just get them on the channel. I'd also love to do a study on the book of Revelation and what Jesus' end time plan is and what that looks like. Let me know what you guys would like to see. I love you. I'll see you later. God bless you guys. Bye.